Good afternoon. Uh, I, I find these uh, yellow signs interesting. I, I would like to see one imagine a Minnesota with no nurses. That's my background. So no students and no teachers, no police, but are there nurses? Because 80 percent of the state's new nurses are educated in uh, our state colleges and universities. That's that's a big number, 80 <laughs> percent. We want those nurses to be here to be able to especially take care of me. I'm not, it's, I'm getting there. And I, when I uh, taught nursing at Minnesota State University, I used to look at the students and say, my investment in you in part is very selfish because one of these days I'm going to be looking up from a bed or I might be in a nursing home and I'm going to be looking in your face and I want to make sure that our investment in you as a state, my investment in you as an educator will make certain that when you're taking care of me that you're well prepared, well trained, and capable of carrying out those responsibilities. And I know that we feel that way about when our students are looking in the face of teachers or when the public is concerned about its safety and they're looking into the face of the police officers, that they're being uh, uh, served in those sectors by people who are well prepared, well trained, that we, when we look in our engineers' faces, we see a liveliness and a creativity and an ability to think about new ways of creating new products or doing things at a, at a faster and more effective way technologically. So 53% of the state's new teachers, 92% of the new police officers, that beats nursing. 91% of the state's new construction and trade workers, 91% of the state's new mechanics, 42% of the state's new business graduates, 9,000 firefighters and emergency first responders. This, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about what the value of higher education is in this state. And when we, uh, when we create an immediate or short-term relief to the budget from cuts to higher education, we are only creating a situation that's going to cost everyone in a more serious way in the future. The breadth and the depth of the problem when the state reduces its commitment, its responsibility to higher education, can be hidden from the public. It can be hidden because Education is a long-term investment. Its long-term benefits are increased income for those who get a higher education, a quality workforce for business growth, new product innovation from research, and continuing training of our workforce. Those are long-term benefits. This is a short-term solution to take uh, a consequence of the significant budget reductions in higher education that will cost us in the long run. Our reduced commitment has been occurring over a substantial period of time. And as the students have already said, when the state reduces its commitment, it's making a statement, isn't it, about what its value system is or what the state's interest is in higher education? When we reduce our contribution to the higher education of our students, are we making a statement that the state has reduced its interest in higher education. This year, the University of Minnesota has told us that for the first time, the state's interest reflected in its share of costs is less than what is collected from tuition at the University of Minnesota. And the students here that represent the Minsku system, that uh, relationship has changed so that now 49% of that budget is coming from student tuition and 51% from the state. So it's very close. It's very close and, and it is making a statement, I think, about what this state believes is its interest in higher education. I don't think that's the statement we want to be making because the consequences are too severe. And if we ask students to pay more for their education and they have to do things like work extra hours, work long hours to pay for their education or to retire loans. What we're really doing, I saw this when I was teaching at Minnesota State University, is we're asking students to go to the classroom. They're exhausted, they're tired. I'm teaching nursing, I'm trying to teach complex ideas that they need to spend some time integrating the sciences, the application of science to the care of a client. And they have to take that information Spend some time taking it in. This is not only true for, for nursing, but for other professional preparation, uh, any of that content. You need time to take it in. It cannot just be done in the classroom. 
and then off to work, long hours with exhaustion following so that when you come to class the next day, you can't concentrate, you can't stay awake, not because the course is uninteresting, which would never be the case if I was teaching, <laughs> but because they're tired. So what is the quality of that education? It's costly, it should have quality, and students ought to have time in the context of that to be able to really have reflective time, time to really integrate what's happening. And the groups that we need to attract in order to meet the need for workforce shortages, the needs that we have in higher education for graduates, will require us to draw from a completely new population, a group of students whose families might never have received higher education in the past. Those students uh, are coming from families that may not have the resources, or even some of the knowledge base that's required to help them understand how to maneuver through a higher education system. Without the resources to assist those students, usually the lower income students, the students whose families are struggling just to stay above the poverty level, if we do not have resources in place uh, to support the state's responsibility for higher education, and we pass more and more of that obligation onto students, especially those middle income students that do not find themselves eligible for the low-income grants, the Pell Grants, then we are really undermining another long-term need and goal of the state, and that is to continue to attract students from K-12, make them interested in higher education uh, from a group of people that have never been there before. We are really undercutting our capacity to be able to attract them and to help them be successful and sustain that higher education. So. With that, I would like to say that I think that the state does have a very strong interest in access, creating access for students, in creating quality in the classroom for students, for supporting research and innovation for the future of the state of Minnesota, and to be able to attract those students into the, to this kind of education to strengthen our workforce, and be able to help them create, have a, a development of an economic background for themselves that they can really uh, have a quality of life in the state of Minnesota that we've promised to them when they get a higher education. Thank you.